right. With that said, man, thank you very much, Michael, for joining us. All right. And let me bring you in, man. Let's do it. Let's do this the right way. Welcome to the Boxing r Rundown. Hall of Famer from Phoenix, Arizona, Michael Manitas de Piedra Carba. What's up, guys? He's here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I, see it. I see it. All you guys are here. You guys are there waiting for him. All right. Welcome. Welcome, Michael. Um, first of all, um, what have you missed since retiring in 1999, bro? What have you missed from the sport of boxing? Fighting being in the ring, man. I miss it. I miss it a whole lot. But, you know, just training training at the gym helps me. So I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. With, with, with that said, you know, there's a lot of legends coming back. We see Mike Tyson do an exhibition. Marco Antonio Barrero is going to do an ex, uh, ex, exhibition. All of these fighters. Does that entice you to come back? Or, you know, you're in the gym training here, just trying to keep yourself leveled and everything. Does that entice you to come back and have, like, uh, just an exhibition fight? No, I, it don't entice me at all. Um, you know, the only thing that'll entice me is if they pay me so much money. If I, they got to pay me a whole lot of money. But the thing is, um, I'm satisfied with my career. That's why it doesn't entice me. I retired world champion, so I think that hurts a lot of the fighters. And, you know, they want to come back and, and fix that. You know, they want to end up with a win on their, on their careers. And um, to me, I think it's just a little too late for all of that. Um, you end up the way you end up, you be smart and you just, that's why I said after I, I beat Arce, um, I knew Arce was beating me that fight. I knew he was um, too young and he was, he was winning the fight. And when I knocked him out, you know, I just knew, you know, this is it for me. I re I'm retiring world champion and that's it. And that was a promise that, you know, me and you have spoken in the past, you know, um, me and Michael are pretty close and, he told me one of the promises he made to his dad. Um, well, go ahead. Tell us what the promise you made to your dad was. Well, see, when I was a little kid, I never knew. My dad uh, My dad said I was about six years old. And he goes, you know what? I told my dad, Pa, I'm going to be a world champion, and I'm going to retire world champion. And I said, Pa, I said that at six years old. I don't remember saying that, <laughs> but that's what he told me. Wow, man. Wow. But and okay, I up, so, and I ended up retiring world champion, becoming the world champion, retiring world champion. So I'm satisfied. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of piggyback on what uh, Stack said right now. Um, he says that you made that promise. Now going in, like you said, you already knew you were losing to ours, and you knock him down or knock him out, and you win. You said I'm retiring. You already made up your mind during the knockout, right? You know what? Right after the fight, I still said I still have it in me, man. Okay. <laughs> But um, I knew better after, after a few weeks or so. I said, you know what? I'm a retired champion. I, I found out these younger kids, you know, Arce was 21 years old. I was 32 at the time. So I said, you know what? Like I said, I'm a retired world champion. So, and that's what I did. Now, was, was that a promise to your dad in the back of your mind when you were making the decision or you still hadn't remembered that promise? I remembered it and I've always felt it. And um, I just said, you know what? Right after the Arsa fight, I knew, I knew, you know what? I'm retiring up on top and I'm gonna stay like that. I'm not gonna go on and, and keep fighting. And I already knew they're, they were a whole lot quicker than I was. And I was, I was only 32 at the time. And you know, on the lighter weight classes, it's a little bit different than the heavier weight classes. Heavier weight, classes like the heavyweights, they can last a little longer, a little more, um, you know, with their age. Um, the, the lighter weight classes aren't like that. And you had already fought and had a stellar amateur career. You were part of that famous mm -hmm. 88 Olympic team with Roy Jones Jr., right? Right. Who, who else were some of the some of your team members that year in 88? There was, um, let, shoot, let me go down from my weight. Flyway was, was Arthur Johnson, Bantamweight, was Kennedy McKinney, uh, featherweight was um, Kelsey Banks. Um, let me see, lightweight was Romali Fellers, Junior Watchway. I mean, Watchway was um, Todd Foster. And then we had um, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, then uh, we had Riddick Bowe, Ray Mercer, mm -hmm. and Andrew Maynard. And that was all of us there. Hell of a, hell of a squad right there, man. 
Yep. I have a shout. I have a shout out for you from somebody that you might know. I'm gonna bring it up. Jessica Carvajal says the best manitas de piedra. You might know Jessica, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, Jessica, Jessica Carvajal. I thought you said yeah. Jesse. <laughs> no, Jessica Carvajal. Yeah, that's that's my cousin. Hello, Jessica. Yeah. You? There you go, Jessica. Hi. All right. Let me ask you this: In such a great illustrious career that you have, is there something that you would change or done differently? Um, you know what? If I really think about it, the only thing that I would have ever did differently was fight a different weight class. But I was so I I was just stuck on that uh, junior flyweight division. I really didn't need to move up or. or and in looking back, should I have, I should, I should, um, you know, you could have or do this, but I really don't look back at it, but if I would have. To move, okay. But it wasn't hard for you or difficult for you to make weight, right? Was it? No, not at all. That's why I stood at that weight class. I, I was walking along 115, but once I got into the gym, I was down 205, six pounds. And I uh, stood at 108 pounds. You know, throughout my whole career, I was like that. I was just a small guy, man. And, and the stronger I was at that weight class, there was no need for me to move. To move up. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's asking if you guys are related to the Buck family. And a big shout out to the Buck family out there on 9th Street. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes, we are. Oh. <laughs> huh? Yes. 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 Keep yes. Back. All the Bucks, yes. I all the Bucks. So, yeah. So, yes, he is. He is related to the Buck family. He's related to all the Bucks out there in Arizona. That's right. Shout out, shout out to the Buck family, I guess. Shout yeah. out to the Buck family. Yeah, so somebody knows you. Yeah. There you go. Well, <laughs> so, Manito, Manito de Pierdas, right? Where Manitas. Pierdas, Manitas, Manitas, right? That's right. Where, where, do you, where, where do you get that from? Where'd you get that nickname? It was just a while. My idol, of course, your brother Duran. So, um, they're just calling me Little Hands of Stone. You're the little one. You'll be the Little Hands of Stone. And that's the way it came up. And when you first fought, right? Your very first fight was actually on a Roberto Duran undercard, correct? Unbelievable, isn't it? I right. mean, throughout my whole career, you know, when I was an amateur, and then what do you know? I'm in, on his undercard, my first professional fight when he fought Iran Barkley at the Trump Plaza. It was unbelievable, man. You know, just looking up to the guy and then Oh man, I'm on his undercard now. This is my first pro fight. Hell yeah. <laughs> Did you have a meeting with him or anything or try to find a way to actually talk to him on your pro debut? Or yeah. you just said it yourself? Yeah, I, I met him. I had met him before. And, um, you know, we, we just said hello to each other. And he goes, you're a good fighter, Michael. I'm just, I'm just glad you have my name. But you know what? Just keep it up and keep it strong and keep it going. That's great, man. That's great. Now, great. Right in, in Phoenix, right? You don't get a lot of boxers coming out of Phoenix, especially back then. There wasn't a, a, a lot of fighters coming out of Phoenix. Well, now there so is. You, but... you actually won your first world title in your hometown, correct? Yes, I did. That tell, was... tell us a little bit about that. Ooh, man, that was that was unbelievable, too, man. We had a, a I mean, packed crowd at the Coliseum that was back in 1990. Oh, man, you... You guys make me cry when I think back. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Well, you might make uh, us cry. Uh, you might make uh, us cry. Uh, that was July 29th, 1990, man. It was about, what, a year and a half after I, after I turned pro. So I won my uh, professional title in my 15th pro fight. So it was pretty quick, man. It was pretty quick. Unbelievable. When I look back and, and look at all that stuff, I just trip out, man. <laughs> but it's, it's cool. What I'm tripping out about, you said you had 15 pro fights from 89 to 1990? Yeah. Wow. Good Lord. February, we, we will February. never see that again. 15. I was almost fighting every other month. Oof. I loved it. I loved it. And then oh, not God. only that, not only that, after I won the title, I said I want every number one contender right after another. Oof. He didn't, he didn't fight. He didn't fight dead fish. He didn't fight cold fish. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. So, um, and I did that three times in a row. And I go, give me the number one contender. Just give me the number one contender. I don't want to have no, um, what do you call those? Uh, you don't want to cherry pick? 
No, 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 no. When, when, no, when you're obligated, you have to fight them. That's mandatory. It. Oh, mandatory. 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 And that's it. Mandatory is that. Okay. Now, what can, what kind of advice can you give somebody? And I don't think we'll ever see 15 fights in a year. But let's say for up and coming fighters that want to fight, well, what what could it be, Fern or Stax? Four or five fights a year. What can you advise them to do? Since you did 15 in a year, what can you advise them, Michael? You know what? Uh, at this time, I would say fight every every other month or so. It depends if it's a tough fight or not. You know, if you get an early knockout and it's not a real tough fight, then you can fight every other month. Okay. But I don't I don't think a lot of fighters do that anymore. Um, it it and maybe it's a lot harder now. So I I really haven't paid attention. So it may be tougher now. Go ahead, guys. From your now. era to now. Oh, you go, Sax. Go, 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 go uh, I'm going to say from your era to now, do you, do you see a huge difference in the sport? Is it more business now than it was back in the days? What, what, what is it according to you or how do you see it now? It's a lot of, um, it's just like when I first came up, there's a lot of weight classes, you know, it's a, it's, I mean, the business, business wise, um, these fighters, uh, they're not as dedicated, I don't think. And you got to get them disciplined, dedicated, and have that desire. You want that desire where the kid comes up to you and says, I want to be champion. I love to hear that. You just don't say, I want to come and box or I want to come and train. When he says, I want to be a champion, I said, oh, hell yeah. I, I love that. So uh -huh. oh, you want to ask a question yeah, yeah, from the fans? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going we'll go to, we'll get to the fans right now. I'll ask a question from the fans in a minute. But to piggyback on top of what Fern was saying, right, one thing I've noticed and one thing I know for a fact, right, is if you fight the way Michael did and you take those fights, the business and the money will be there because when it came time for him to fight Chiquita Gonzalez, mm -hmm. right, they were the first flyweights to ever fight and make a million dollars each. Or make a million each, yep, each yep, yep. yep. You know, so it, it it was his dedication in the ring that got him paid. There wasn't wasn't the policy have, that we have it now. It still hasn't happened yet. No, mm -hmm. no, any it hasn't. Flyweights, flyweights, any of them guys, bantamweights, any of them have not made one million dollars. I I interviewed Gallo Estrada about two years ago, and he said that he's like, I want to get to the point where I'm making a million dollars like Chiquita Gonzalez and Michael Carvajal. And I was like, you guys should be making that. And I made a big fuss about it, you know what I mean? But right. why do you think they're not going to ever make that money? Or why do you think they haven't made that money presently? You know what? I, I really don't know. I think the, the thing about me is that I came out of the Olympics and I was, a light, I was in the lighter weight class like that as a flyweight. Nobody ever knew that we were going to make that. Or whatever. I didn't even care. I just wanted to be a world champion. I wasn't even paying attention about the money. And uh, after a while, then I started saying, oh, wow, you know, we made a million dollars. We're flyweights, junior flyweights. And nobody from junior flyweights up to lightweight ever made a million dollars in one fight. Wow. Okay. I have a question from the fans. With so many fights, this is from Nancy DeAnda in Texas. With so many fights, was your family able to pr be present at uh, those fights and watch you? Not all of them. There was a few of them that, that were there, yes. Yes. I think this is a great, um, a great comment by a fan. Richard Bautista says, glad to see Michael looks good after uh, his boxing career. Saludos, champ. That's from um, my, uh, Richard Bautista. What I want to do right now, guys, I want to make sure you guys are doing this for, for Michael. And, and then Michael has his own uh, follow Michael, Michael Carvajal underscore official. Make sure you guys follow Michael yes. Carvajal underscore official, guys, for the latest on Michael Carvajal. Okay, let's continue the interview, guys. So every once in a while, I'm going to do that because I want to make sure we grow your, your page, Michael, and we get you guys going. That's on Instagram, guys, Michael Carvajal underscore official. Thank you. Get the young, get the younger fans to basically get to know more about you. You know, basically have yes. them come back and watch old fights and everything like that because that's basically what boxing is now nowadays. You know, I asked the question about the older guys coming back and everything like that and trying to relive moments, but 
with streaming services, with YouTube and all that, they could find older fights and building your fan base for them to watch older older fights. They could compare you to like what we see now, the Gallo Estrada, the Chocolatito Gonzalez, the Quadras, the uh, Sorunga size of the world right now. So, you know. That would be, that'll be good to see, man, for all, for all the little lighter weight classes to do, do the same thing, get them big crowds, what we used to do. And I love to, you know what, I love to say that because what we did is unbelievable. Uh, what me and Chiquita did and that, and, and, and get all them people in there like right. that, it was like a heavyweight fight, man. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand too. Heavyweight fight. When, when they fought, when him and Chiquita fought each other, they were signed with two different networks, right? right? Yep. They had two different, they had two different networks going. It was a dual pay-per-view. And you had Jimmy Lennon Jr. and Michael Buffer <laughs> in the same ring announcing two separate fighters. Like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, that, that was uh, funny because uh, they're, um, they were telling, they're, they had told me, hey, um, Jimmy Lennon's going to end up... Um, you know, doing the whole fight thing. I said, no, no, he's not. I was with Michael Buffer throughout my whole career, right from my first fight on. You guys are gonna bring Michael Buffer in here. Let Michael Buffer announce me and then we'll have a fight. But you know, I was gonna fight anyways, but I just yeah. said that. <laughs> I but Michael Buffer, I'm not fighting. <laughs> I, I'm gonna make a confession right here, guys. And, um, and this is crazy. Michael Carvajal versus Chiquita Gonzalez was a fight that I watched that made me a boxing fan, guys. And, and that's on everything I love. That's the nice. fight that got me into, into the sport of boxing. Thank I know a lot of people will say Chavez and this and that, but it was... I, so when, when I heard you wanted to be on the show and we were going to bring you on the show, I was so excited, Michael. So uh, I was very happy. Now, no. I want to ask you something. I appreciate that. Man. I appreciate that. Yeah, they kept uh, it secret from me. Exactly, they bro. It, nobody they knew. Nobody ever like, thought it was a challenge. No, no. It's actually, <laughs> them two got me going, bro. I remember that. <laughs> no, but Michael, let me ask you this. How did boxing change Michael Carbajal? You know what? From being a little kid and starting at 14 years old, it changed my personality. It gave me a lot of confidence. And I was really, really quiet, man. I was still during out my career, I was still quiet. I only talked when, when I had to or when I wanted to or when the fighters talked shit or something like that. But I, I was always quiet, you know. I was never a bragger or, or, or talk shit a lot. If you did say something like real crazy, I would spit some words up. And then I will just say, we'll see what, what we have when we get in the fight. When we get in the ring, then you talk. And that's what I used to do. How hard was it for them to make that actual fight between you and Chiquita Gonzalez, man? As you know, as far as that goes, you know, because like I said, it's two different, you know, two different types of uh, networks going on. He was the WBC champ, so he had the backing of the WBC. He had the backing of most of the uh, the Mexican nationals, you know, the, the the Mexicans from Mexico. Us Chicanos were going for you, you know. I remember being a kid and all my family going for Gonzalez. You know, me being a Mexican American watching you in the Olympics, you know, going for you and. Uh, you know, how, how did that how did that fight come to play, man? It just came um, to keep, we were at the same weight class, man. And Chiquita was pulling everybody at the forum. You know, he was with forum boxing. I was with top rank. And, you know, they, um, I guess Bob Arum and um, Jerry Buss got, got along. So they say, look, we got these two guys. And I got Michael Carball, you got Chiquita somewhere around there. And let's, let's get it on. I said, I want to fight, you know, Chiquita wants to fight. And that's how it, that's how it came up. I have, I think it's a question and a comment from far, from fans. Uh, Vargas Tribe uh, says, are you and Chiquita still in contact with each other? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Please check each other. Yes. There you go, guys. Yeah. There you go. So, All right. That go fight, ahead. that fight, man, you and Chiquita, that's probably one of, that's one of my top five greatest fights of all time. Mine personally. I'm not saying it is, but me personally, that's one of my top five greatest fights of all time. Great. Great. Chiquita hits you, man. You know, most fighters nowadays, you know, they say, oh, when you got hit, you got dropped where you hurt. No, I wasn't hurt. I knew this. I knew that. When Chiquita hits you, man, when he dropped you, 
what, what was that like getting hit by somebody like Chiquita Gonzalez? You know what, man? I look back at that that one punch that he hit me with. I'm talking about the second knockdown. In the fifth round, yeah. But man, I don't know how in the hell he didn't knock me out. <laughs> it, was perfect. it was perfect. But when I got up, I was dizzy. I could not feel my right leg on the canvas. So when he came at me, I said, God damn. So I moved a little bit. He was on my ass. Da, da, da. But once I found my right leg on that canvas, I said, uh-oh, your ass is mine now. And that's <laughs> what happened, man. And um, it, was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was an unbelievable fight. I loved it. I loved it. But I always liked them wars. You know, I love to fight. OK. Yeah. So you like the wars. You like the bank. Oh, I love it. I love it. I like to be right in there. You hit me with whatever you got. I hit you whatever. Whoever lasts, whoever lasts right there. Let's do it. Who gets knocked out? Since, let's do it. Since your retirement, since you love banging and you love bangers and everything like that, since you've retired, what are your top three fighters that that you saw since you retired love to bang? Love to just go out there and yeah. fight and just go at it. Who did you see after you kind of follow after that, you. that? Yeah. Yeah. I love um I love Mikey Garcia, man. I just Ooh. love his style. I love his style. There's a new kid that's coming around that I love, and that's uh, Fondora. You um, like Fondora? You like Fondora? You like, all right, cool. Yeah, that boy can fight inside too. He yeah. Can. Okay, before you give us a third, let me ask you this, Michael. Do you, because somebody asked a question earlier when we we're doing the breakdown on the fights, do you think Fondora is ready for uh, one of the Charlo brothers? Right now, I would say, you know what? I give him a couple more fights, just a couple more go. fights, because Fondora, man, that guy can fight from the outside, inside, but he loves to fight inside, and I love that because even though he has them long arms, he knows what he's doing on the inside, and I said, shoot, man, this guy's going to be around for a long time. That's my prediction. Nice. Thanks. All right, number three. Now, you said Mikey and Fondora. Who, who, who's the who's other number one? Number three. Let me think, man. I, be, I might be missing somebody that I go, God damn, I didn't say his name. <laughs> but, hey, but, 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 oh, but man, I forgot, I forgot, man. If you want to do a top five, you can do a top five. Yeah, man. you can do a top five. Don't worry. You can keep going. This is your this is your time, my man. Do, do you on that one. And, and Michael, even if you, if you remember later, don't forget, guys. And this is a promise that we made to Michael. And I know Stax has told you. But we're making it live right now, guys. When the uh, pandemic okay. is a little bit more under control, we are going to the 9th Street Gym. We yeah. are going. The I Boxing Rundown will do a live show from Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome, man. Yes, we will. Look, I love Mikey Garcia. I love Ryan Garcia. I love Fondora, the new newcomer. Um, Chocolatito, I like, I like his style, man. And uh, hey, there you go. I love his style. Uh, I know I'm missing somebody that I got to write on the tip of my tongue. I can't figure out who he is. I know after the show, I'm going to say, God damn it, daddy. That's what it is. <laughs> but I'll give you four of them, all right? <laughs> let, let me ask you another question. Let me, let me ask you on your thoughts on a fighter that has always divided so many people in his past. And I'll even ask you about two fighters because to me, both of these fighters have been very, indeci like very indecisive to people. It always separates people. Let me get your thoughts on Floyd Mayweather, and let me get your thoughts on Canelo. There you go. Okay. okay. I'm going to tell you one thing. Floyd Mayweather is a very, very smart boxer. He knows, he knows what to do. He knows how to do it. And that's the only way. The only way you can beat Floyd Mayweather is give him a lot of pressure. And right, right now, that's the Right now is the time to do it because he's older now. But when he was champion and he's doing that and he's boxing the way he does, he's unbelievable. Um, Canelo, he has everything, man. That dude has sharpness. He can box. He can come forward. He can fight inside. That's why he said, I want Mayweather. Mayweather don't want nothing to do with me anymore. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what, both of them are great champions, man. And I, I love them both. You know, Mayweather, he's a little bit too uh, flashy for me. But the way he boxes, the way he fights, I love the way he fights. He fights his own style. 
and that's the way he is, and 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 he does it. So there it goes. I give him a lot. He's yeah, you did. Champion. You did. That's champion, man. Badass. Ruckus, who who did you think the other guy I was gonna say was? I, I thought you were gonna say Manny Pacquiao, bro. I thought you because you said like you know people. No, no, that, Manny Pacquiao doesn't yeah. separate people yeah, much. Like a lot, a lot of people love Pacquiao. Him. That's uh-huh. what I was thinking about. That was my fifth. Right. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, that's your fifth. Yeah. That's his fifth. There we go. Yeah, that, 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 I, was, I was really I, thinking like. Man, why did I forget Pacquiao, man? You know, okay. nobody would ever do like Pacquiao. Pacquiao, he was at my weight class, one class above me mm-hmm. at the time we were fighting. And he moved all the way up, man. And to do that, that's unbelievable. I don't think anybody's going to do that anymore. And he's just knocking all these guys out. Let me ask mm-hmm. you this, Michael. How tall are you? Five five. Five five. How tall is Manny, guys? Five six. Like five six, five seven. Ooh, he's six. not. He's not that much taller. So, like so five, that six, this five, is seven. why, right? My, Michael's thinking about it. like he moved all the way up. Michael could have done all those dimensions too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he's whipping ass, man. Yeah. Man, you think I tell that you... Would... Okay, let me ask this one. You think no, Michael you that will ever be done? Now I'm gonna tell you something. Now I'm gonna brag about myself. You know. Go I'm... ahead. Uh, you know, all my sparring partners, they were lightweights and welterweights. And I was whipping their asses. Mm. Any any <laughs> any big name lightweights, welterweights that you were sparring with? Like real big names. They're not big, big names. Not like that. But I'm yeah. saying they were all heavier than me. I was 106 pounds throughout my career. And I was fighting. I was sparring them guys. Them guys helped me out a lot. And the other guys were, were from Mexico. You know, they were my size. So gotcha. I had three, four, five, six sparring partners and went many rounds. So it was, was it was, was it hard to get sparring back in the days, uh, Michael? Is that why you were sparring those big guys? Not at all. It, it was not hard at all. Yeah. You you know everything nowadays is fantasy fights. Like what would have happened if Mike Tyson would have fought Muhammad Ali or something like that? For you, you in your prime, and seeing somebody in their prime now, who would you say? You know what? My prime versus that person's prime, that would have been a fantasy match for you. Who would you say that would be it? Me and Ricardo Lopez. Ooh, finito. Nice. That would have been a fight. Just by our style. That would have been perfect. Perfect. That that would have been a... Okay. You already said it. Where would you have liked that fight to take place? That's why I went with Don King when I was fighting when I was fighting, I went with Don King because he promised me Ricardo Lopez. But um, it just never ended up happening. Is the reason I lost to Chiquita in Mexico City. Ricardo Lopez won the same card. He defended his strawweight. Mm-hmm. That, that was the plan. I ended up losing decision, so it never happened. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. That's, that was it. Now, let's just... Let's play matchmaker since Fern threw it out there. How would that fight would have gone in your in your head? How do you think that fight would have played out between you and Ricardo? I think, well, you know I'm going to say I, I would have knocked his ass out. But early, okay, but early or later? Just by, i say about around seven, eight rounds. Okay. The same, the same as Chiquita. But see... When I thought, when I fought Chiquita, Chiquita used to throw real wide. But when he fought me, he was short and he was quicker, way quicker than I thought. Lopez is a real wide puncher too. If you see his hooks, they're really wide. And I said, man, I could get out under that. His punches are wider than me. I'm way, and we're the same height too. That would have been terrible. It would have been terrible for him. <laughs> I like that, I like that. You see, you at least you you at least attempted to make that fight because you lost. It didn't happen, and everything like that. Now nowadays, we as boxing fans, boxing people that just watch the sport, we love the sport. We don't necessarily get the fights we want to see, like let's say uh, Crawford versus Spence, because we feel politics is involved. You being an older head and you being in the fight game, does it bother you nowadays that some fights don't get made that should get made? Of course. I mean, that's going to go on forever. I think it's been going on way back in boxing there. You know, everybody wanted somebody to fight somebody. It just don't happen. It all depends on the managers and the promoters. That's who's really in charge, man. Unless 
you as a fighter, you say, nah, you can, I'm gonna get that fight no matter what. Mm -hmm. Both fighters can do that. Both fighters can do that to the manager. But you know, the managers and promoters, just like you say, all them politics get involved and the money gets involved. And then the fighters wanna fight each other. Believe me, we wanna fight, man. We wanna fight the best in the world. And when you have that in your heart and you love that, like all of us champions, that's what we want. We want champions, man. We want to unify the title. We want to be the best in the world. And that's what all fighters want. Believe me, all these champions out there right now, we all want to fight the best. See, and I think that's the direction that boxing is starting to go into a little bit more. Um, we're seeing it a lot more than we have in the past. Before, I think the big thing was different weight classes. I'm a three division. I'm a four division. I'm a five division champion, right? Something that's never been done. Now it looks like these fighters are concentrating on becoming undisputed champions. You had Terrence Crawford do it. Um, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have Jose Ramirez trying to uh, become a Taylor. undisputed champion against Taylor. Yeah. Um, Canelo eventually is going to try to become undisputed uh, uh, super middleweight champion. So, you know, Charlo, I Charlo, a lot, a lot of the boxers now are starting to do like what you, you know, what you attempted to do and become an undisputed world champion and unify these titles. You know, that I think that's the, the big thing now. And that's the direction I think boxing needs to go into, you know, I mean, we have to have the, the, the best fighting the best and people don't understand, you know, I think, well, I shouldn't say people, I think we understand, but a lot of these fighters, they, they get pumped up so much in their head that that O is really going to affect them, you know, and to me, it creates more of a legacy when you do go in there and you have a good showing, you know, like you, the, your Chiquita losing to you didn't hurt Chiquita's legacy. No. You losing to Chiquita Gonzalez in a rematch didn't hurt your legacy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it actually builds your stock up. You know, um, for instance, this last loss that Chocolatito had against um, Gallo Estrada. Mm -hmm. That's, to me, that loss right there raised both of their stocks. And now we're going yep. to get a trilogy. And I wouldn't doubt that they become the second super flyweights to make a million dollars. Right. People want to see that fight, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to do another commercial right here. Don't forget, guys, in, in Instagram, follow Michael Carvajal underscore official. Make sure you guys are following Michael Carvajal underscore official for the latest Michael Carvajal uh, news. Okay, guys? Also, I have a comment from Vargas Tribe. I got to ask you, champ. Uh, you and Johnny Tapia were my heroes. Any thoughts on my vida, mi vida loca? Uh, rip champ. That's what it says. So any thoughts on... Uh, on uh, Tapia, Johnny Tapia, uh, Michael. Johnny Tapia, Johnny Tapia is another great champion now. Me and him fought an amateur twice. He beat me twice. He beat me twice. And uh, he knows, he knows how tough them fights were because we talked about it later on. And um, I love Johnny Tapia, man. He is a great champion. Hey, right. guys, if you guys love hearing the stories from uh, Michael Carvajal, make sure you guys hit that share button. Let everybody know that we have Michael Carvajal the legend in the house. Manitas de Piedras in the house, guys. Okay, go ahead, guys. Any questions? I think we're all in agreement here. What I mean by all, I mean Ruckus, Stacks, and myself, that the O is overrated in boxing nowadays. Do you feel that that zero on the loss column is overrated? Barry, they should, uh, they should see a lot of the, a lot nowadays, a lot of these trainers, managers, whatever, if you have a fighter, you know, don't baby his ass. Don't put him in there with little goddamn fish. All right. You get you get guys that I can't believe these commissions. They get guys that are 33 and 30. They get guys that are one and nine. They get guys that are that's the commission's fault, man. I, I got all over this Arizona commission. I I talked to them already. You guys are you guys can't do that, man. You're just messing yourself up. Why don't you, when these guys come, make sure they're evenly matched. But see these fighters, you get a talented fighter, whatever, whatever, you want to put him in with fish, what is he going to learn? He's not going to learn a goddamn thing until he goes up and then he gets his ass whipped and gets knocked out because you didn't progress him in the right way. That's what I'm going to do with my fighters. You know, I'm not going to put no little fish on them. If you're going to fight, you're going to get in there. You're going to win. You're going to win. If you're going to lose, you're going to lose. You're going to come back. You're going to win again. That's how I want my fighters. I want my fighters to have that warrior mentality to whip fast, become champions, and that's all it is to it. Here's what I tell my young ones. I go, 
When you look across that ring, all you got to do is right there. Your ass is mine, and that's it. You don't got right. to You don't got to yeah, yeah. Your ass is mine, and that's it. Because that's what I do <laughs> every fight. I say, your ass is mine, that's it. Michael, so you're right. You're right in the in the barrio, man. You're right on Ninth and Fillmore. How hard was it to to stay in boxing and not join the gangs right there in your neighborhood, man? You know, it was it was tough, man. But you know, everybody respected the fact. You know, hey, that's Michael, man. He, you know, he, he he wants to be a champion. You know, and it was hard, you know, from rival gangs and everything like that. You know, oh, there's that little pussy, whatever, whatever. You get in a, a little fight. But other than that, man, you know, everybody was supporting me after, you know, the Olympics and all that, and, you know, winning national championships. You know, I, we, we started getting along, even with the rival gangs, you know. I was getting along with all of them. So it was pretty much like that at the beginning when they didn't like me or, you know, they knew I was from 9th Street or whatever, and it was hard. But later on, it, you know, everything's all right. He's from the hood, you know, he's from everywhere, you know, even though they all go, nah, so we had three different gangs in, in one neighborhood, man. You know, there was like Garfield, Dup we were all four blocks from each other. Mm. It was crazy. The three gangs, th three, four blocks from each other. And it, it was, it was wild way back in the day. You're talking about Boulevard Night days. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Boulevard Night. <laughs> Movie. No, I'm talking about those days. When when you won your first world title, did they make a parade for you in Phoenix, Arizona? Now, when I you know when I came out of the Olympics, it was crazy. I mean, this whole neighborhood, the That's... airport, everything was okay. Crazy. So and, and you're talking about the gangs. So you know, in that little radius, all those gangs were right there supporting you, and they saw yeah, that everybody. You know, Everybody hooked up. There was all the gangs from different neighborhoods, even from a mile away. Gangs, everybody was all together when I came back from the Olympics, man. It was unbelievable. Crazy. All the, all the way from the airport to the house. And, and, people lined up. It was think about wild. It. A positive outcome of that neighborhood created such positivity you know what i mean so sometimes I, I think this is what we need guys we need guys like michael carvajal in this neighborhood man because we need to stop the violence you know we need to see great guys come out of our our areas do great things you know thank you michael for doing such great things and being such a great role model that's something that nobody could ever take that away from you know what i mean you know they even uh they even built chase field right down the street from where he has his gym you know i mean and of all areas, if you guys know Phoenix and people that are familiar with Phoenix, you know, you got Scottsdale, you have these parts that are as rich as Beverly Hills, you know, and they come to the barrio three, four blocks down from where Michael Carbajal's at and build Chase Field. Like, seriously, like they really built around his neighborhood. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's still barrio, don't get me wrong, but I mean, he, he did a lot. He did a lot for that community. <laughs> What's so funny about that, man, you know, this neighborhood has changed now, you know, because we're riding right downtown. And my father had always told me before he died, nothing against any kind of colored people or anything. This was nothing but Mexicans in this neighborhood for years. But when my dad was a kid, he said, don't get me wrong now, nothing but white people were here. I didn't mind, you know, I, I don't mind anybody, but check this out. So now he goes, mijo, this is before he died. Mijo, you know the neighborhood's going to change. I go, why? He goes, you know we're right downtown. Look how big the city's getting. All the gringos are going to come back. And I go, what do you mean come back? Because when I grew up here, there was nothing but Mexicans. And uh, I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, when I was a younger kid, it was puro gringos, mijo. I said, oh, well, I didn't know that. And after that, what, 94 years later, now, 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 this whole, this neighborhood is like, I mean, everybody wants to live here now because we're right downtown. That's why everybody wants to live right at this zip code, hottest zip code in the country. I mean, in Phoenix, wherever it is, Arizona, it's a hottest zip code, man. 
everybody just moving over here. Condos everywhere. It's, it's totally different, man. Crazy. Cut it out, Michael. You're making us want to move over there, man. Let's get some, let's get some <laughs> questions from the fans. A okay? <laughs> couple of questions. All right, we're going to go with one here. When you hear the term Mexican style, Michael, what does that mean to you? Oh, that's a good question. Mexican style is warrior. I mean, hmm. all, that's what everybody, you know, it's funny because you got a black warrior, you got a white warrior, you got an Indian warrior, you got all them warriors. But I, by Mexican, Mexican boxing, that's their culture, man. That's pretty much their culture. And um, I read that on Chiquita. <laughs> I read that from Chiquita. Chiquita goes, you know, boxeo en México, no más no es boxeo, es en cultura. And that's it's true, man. It's true. It's the culture. And we all can fight. We're all champions, man. And that's what I love. When I see everybody fighting and I see great fights, I say, hell yeah. I love to see that. And that's what boxing is all about. Is being a champion, being a good man at heart to everyone and, and just loving the sport and, and loving to excite all the fans. And that's what I always wanted to do, is just excite everybody. When I go get in that ring, I'm going to make it exciting, and that's it. And You're that's talking it. about... I, I tried every single fight, man. Talking about exciting fighters, man. How close were you and uh, Hector Macho Camacho? Ooh. Um, we weren't, like, real close, but when we seen each other, man, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. That dude is fun, man. That dude is fun to be around. The craziest, craziest dude, man. I just loved him. I, I love shit out of him, man. <laughs> Macho, man. That dude is funny, man. And all he is about fun, just naturally. He just natural like that. You know, everybody thinks he's all stuck up and everything. That's what I thought too. But when I met him and and we got to know each other, I said, God damn, I even told him. Fuck you, Michael. <laughs> I, I just started laughing, man, and, and we started laughing, and, and it, he was great, man. Funny dude, man. He, fun to hang around with. Fern, you have a question? Yeah, actually, since you know uh, they brought up the Mexican style thing, besides yourself, your top five Mexican fighters of all time, Mexican boxers. Oh, Mexican Americans too, no? No, 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 just Mexicans. Just okay. Mexicans, okay. straight up Mexicans. Oh, shit, all right. Okay, Carlos Sarate, Alfonso Zamora, Miguel Canto, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Salvador Sanchez. Oh, man. Nice list. Nice, nice list. That's right. It's a very nice list. No, wow. A, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the newer heads are going to be like, what about Morales, Barrero, or Marquez? No, you got you got the loaded ones. When I was growing up, I, I said a couple of those fighters, few of them fighters, when I was growing up, I was watching. That's Carlos Serato, Alfonso Zamora, Salvador Sanchez, all them. Yeah, and if and for you guys, young cats, go watch them on YouTube, man, and know why he's referring to them. You know what I mean? Yep. There you go. Uh, Michael, I have a quick question. What is your advice to the youth? We already talked about Ninth Street, but what is your advice to the to you, the youth? For them, that they can do anything they want as long as they put their mind to it and have that discipline, that dedication, discipline, and the desire to whatever you're doing, you do it just do it better than anybody else. You want to be number one at what you do. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, whatever you love, you stick in your mind and you say, I'm the champion. I'm the one that's going to beat everybody at this. I'm, I'm going to be number one and that's it. That's what I, I give that, give them kids the advice. Just be champion, have it in your heart and believe in yourself. Have all that confidence and that's it. You're, you're, you're on your way. Now, I'm going to talk to Michael Carvajal, the gym trainer, manager. Uh, talk to us about Nice Street Gym now. 
I want to get to the Ninth Street gym. That's the new thing that we we you're going, you're currently doing right now. You know what I mean? So talk yeah. to us about the gym. Okay, the gym. The gym is not all about boxing or just all about the fighters. That's you know the fighters come to fight. There's other people that go in the gym that don't even they don't want to box. They just want to train, mm -hmm. and we love that. You know, we want to make champions in life, and that's what we do. Whoever comes in there, whoever comes in there, no matter what age. I had a 72 year old in there. <laughs> this guy, I, he. I became, I was like idolizing him. I said, man, when I get that old, I want to be just like you, man. He <laughs> just <laughs> getting the bag and I'm like, yes. And Janelle. <laughs> but you got to admit, you got to break a sweat when you go to the Night Street gym, right? Oh. You just don't like take it easy on them. They see in there, we don't have no coolers in there, nothing. Man. You go straight in there. It's going to be, if it's a hundred, it's a hundred and ten. Outside, it's 115 in the gym. Yeah, I went out there uh, last June. And boy, oh boy, I tell you, that, that Arizona heat. And then I walked into that gym at 9 o'clock at night. And it was still 100 degrees in that gym. I, yeah. yeah. I remember I remember telling Michael, I'm like, yeah, I'd be out here for a week with you and lose 100 pounds quick, man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Jose Reyes says, bring Michael back next week. Michael, actually, we made a promise that when the pandemic is a little bit um, uh, like a lower number, we're going to end up going to Arizona. We're going to all, all of us are going to go to Arizona. We're taking the show out there, man. So, oh, and I'm, and I'm going to and I'm going to challenge both of you. When we go to his gym before we do the show, we at least have to do a workout. All right. Let's do it. I got you. Down. Don't worry about that. I'm down. We all got to do a workout there at that all gym. Guys. All right. All right. All you got to go around with me. Oh, no, no. Come on, Michael. Cut it out, bro. He said a workout. I'm, not a run. I'm down. I'm down. I'm, <laughs> I'm down. I love that. I'm down. I'll go with that. I love hey, that. Hey, I'll, you I'll better take it for the team. That. I'll take it for the team. I'll okay, take it for the team. This. I'm down. If, if we do the run, we're going to bring uh, Albert Baker to film us so we could do a show, uh, a video on that, man. They got to, right. you know, make a video. I'm down with that. that. I'm down with that. Yeah. No, I'll take it for the team. Because you know what? I'm getting in shape training all these kids, so you're going to really get in trouble. I'm oh. In, 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 in 1993, man, 1993, all the way back then. Oh, man. He's, he's trying to scare me. Number one, <laughs> you, the Ring Magazine and the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. How did it feel when you got that title, man, to be the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world? At the time, man, I was just fighting. I loved it. And that's, you know, when they say pound for pound in the world, I really didn't pay attention at that time because I was so concentrating on just whipping everybody's ass. Now that I look back at it, you're talking about pound for pound, number one in the world. You're talking about everybody. At that time in 93, you know who was all up on the top? Mike Tyson, <laughs> Pernell Whitaker. Um, Trinidad, all, all them guys. I don't know if Trinidad was there, but it was another Puerto Rican or one of the fighters. There was a bunch of us out there. Riddick Bowl, Vander Holyfield, all of us, and they they got me as the number one. I look back at it. At the time, I really didn't think too much of it. I just, hey, I got to fight. I got to stay number one now. <laughs> so now that I got, I said, unbelievable, man. It's crazy. I remember uh, last year, the, re the reason I actually went out there, man, was because uh, for Father's Day, my son had bought me that ring magazine from 93 with him with all the belts on it, man. And I'm like, I got to get this shit autographed. Like, I'm going to, here's my reason to go to Arizona and visit Michael is I, now I can get my, now I can get my ring magazine autographed, man. And then uh, also the 2017 uh, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame program. I had one left to get, and that was uh, that was Michael's, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a trip, man, because Michael had all, he's always been my favorite fighter, and then out of the blue, three days before the Hall of Fame, I was asked to go and and uh, and be there and represent the WBC, and I finally got to meet Michael, you know, and uh, we just clicked, man. I told him, you know, I we 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 hit it off, man, and ever since then we've been uh, been friends, man. Mike's my Michael's my brother now, man. I mean, so. 
It's a it's a trip. <laughs> and I think uh, Stacks Anthony right here because he got the he got us the interview with you, Michael, and and it's a pleasure to have you here on the show. Like I said, I mean, all the fans really are are just speaking volume of you. You know what I mean in, in the comment section. So I mean. Uh, thank you, first of all, uh, Michael, for being here on the show. I do have a few more questions that I wanted to ask you. And, and one is, what pushed you, Michael, to, do, to get to that level, to the great level? What was your motivation during all those, I guess, tough nights and tough mornings? You know what I mean? What, what pushed you? It's the desire, man. The desire to be world champion. And, you know, when I think about it, too, when I was saying that when I was a younger kid, I've always believed it, even though when I look back, I say, you know, I was, you know, still playing around and doing this and that. And uh, as soon as I got real serious and it, it just started coming up more and more, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, damn, I'm going to go to Olympics. I, you know, this is the time to go to Olympics. I never, as a kid, I never thought about the Olympics at all. I was thinking about professional champion, professional boxing champion. That's what I was looking at. And I, and I was doing good in the amateurs. I never even thought about the Olympics till I got there. Just about maybe in 83, mm -hmm. when I, I went to the Nationals for the first time, man. And, um, you know, they were talking about the 84 games. Everybody, if you win the Nationals, you're going to have, you know, a lot, a big chance to go to 84 games. But I really never thought about it. I, I was just happy to make and go to the nationals for the first time and make it to quarterfinals. So now I'm getting ranked in top 10. I was happy about that. I didn't care about what they were talking about. Everybody's talking about Olympics and 84s and all that. So it was crazy. So how was your, okay, now that you threw that out there, when they told you you were going to 84, you were going to the Olympics. No. What did you feel? No, that was the 88. That oh, was no. In okay. 84, oh. they were talking okay. about that, but. In 88, yeah, I, well, you know, about, shoot, 86, before, you knew. before, yeah, before the Pan Am Games, that's when I started thinking about all the that. Olympics. And uh, I ended up making it, and that's what I was concentrating on. Once the Olympics are coming around, I said, I'm going. I'm going to whip everybody's ass. I'm going to the Olympics. I'm going to represent the country, and that's it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Cause see, that's the belief. yeah, no, and you believe, you believe, you that believe that you achieve out there. You believe it. Once you get there, you believe in yourself. You have that desire to be number one, and you'll whip everybody's ass. Especially if you're in condition. That's the first thing you got to do is be in condition because everybody else will be, and it's a tough road. But you guys hang in there. I'm talking to all these little kids that are fighting. You guys hang in there, just whip everybody's butt, ass, whatever. You just <laughs> do, do it, man. Okay, you guys do it. You said it earlier. You, you, you were always like five pounds over, even when you were on on off time. Yeah, just I was walking around one fifteen. I was fighting one hundred and six. Oh, so that's yeah, the yeah. highest I ever yeah. got was one fifteen. I'd walk around one twelve. I'm sorry. That's what I'd be walking around. The highest I got was 115. So, so, so think about it, guys. I mean, when Michael's talking about discipline, he's referring to that. He was only six pounds over his limit, his weight class. You know what I mean? Walking around. Like, that is something that I, I, I really admire from you, Michael, because we have fighters now that, that will fight at 147 or 154, and they balloon out to 170. I mean, we have fighters that fight at 130. And they balloon at 165 or 170. The next day, I can't believe they that. come in 16 to 17 to 20 pounds heavy the next day. And I think that's the biggest reason why we don't see these fighters fight 15 times a year. Because if they're gaining 15 fucking pounds overnight, mm -hmm. imagine what they're doing a week later. And then to cut all that weight to try to do that 15 times in a row, it, and it's too much. It, yeah. It's too much for these guys. They don't stay conditioned. And that's one thing, that's one knock that you can't put on Floyd Mayweather. People can knock Floyd all they want, but Floyd was always in shape. Floyd mm -hmm. was never out of shape. Floyd was always ready. Same thing like Michael Carball. Always yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're caught from a different cloth. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. to stay that, that close to their weight, I mean, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's what, 
that's what you really want to do. You know, for mm -hmm. me, I tell all the fighters, you know, we check, I check all the weights and, you know, whatever they weigh, I go, you guys, look, what do you want me to weigh? What do you want me to weigh, coach? What do you want me to weigh? You're going to say natural. Whatever weight that you're closest at, at that fighting weight, you're staying right there. It's not, you're going to, you're not going to drop a whole bunch of weight or gain a lot of weight. You're going to stay natural right there, wherever you're at. What's closer, the closer weight that you're at, at a fighting weight, you stay right there. You'd be strong as hell, and then you knock everybody's ass out. I, I, and I appreciate that, Michael, because there's trainers that will say, you know what? For your height, you, you, you belong in this division. You know what I mean? Even though the kid's probably like 20 pounds over, you know what I mean? And they try to force him to get down those 20 pounds. You, you, you made the clear example. If you're at that weight, stay at that weight. And I've always said that. Why is it the fighters don't stay at the weight that they're usually walking around? Or like you said, five pounds, six pounds over, you could drop that in the training camp, but why not do that? Instead of dropping, like you said, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a discipline, man. That's, that's discipline, guys. Come on, man. Come on. Whatever All right, Michael. You're at, whatever mm -hmm. eye you're at, whatever that fighting weight is, stay close to it, and that's what you want to walk around with. Or just stay naturally so you can be strong, man. You want to be a strong... So you can be knocking people out. You want to be in condition. And that conditioning is everything. Everything. Conditioning is everything. You, if you know you can go the 12 rounds, whatever rounds you got to go, and you feel and you're in condition and you have that confidence, nobody can whip you. No one. I don't care what it is. I, that's the way I felt. Every time I stepped in that ring, I said, your ass is mine. And if it didn't happen, it didn't. I lost four of them. Two to Chiquita, one to Malala, and the other one to Pastrana. And um, it didn't happen that night, but it happened all the other nights. That's right. Out of all the fighters that you fought, you know, we had a question from the fan earlier. What what fighter hit the hardest, man? What, what, puncher, what, what fighter punched you the hardest? You know what? Like I told you before, Stack, everybody can say Chiquita because he knocked me down twice and he had me hurt, wobbly, everything. But you know who hit the hardest was Kid Akasa. Kid Akasa. That's I the first one that world title. title. Yeah. That dude was hitting me with the jab. I thought it was a right hand. I go, God, that he's catching me with the right hand all the time. I go, Michael, that's not a right hand. That's his jab. I say, well, I got to get his ass out of here then. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what a jab. I got to get his ass out of here. And that dude hit hard. With every, every punch, he hit hard. It that, hit fight, hard. that fight's on YouTube, man. So you guys that are tuned in, you guys are watching, man. After this, man, watch that Kitty Kissum fight against Carbajal. Watch that Chiquita Gonzalez first that. fight, you know, with Carbajal. Yeah. There, there's some great fights, man. Carbajal was in some wars. You know, yeah. Mike, his very last fight against Jorge Arce, losing the whole fight <laughs> to end the fight with the knockout and beat Arce top ranks, number one prospect at the time coming up. They're using Michael as a stepping stone, you know, basically here, let's hand the reins over to, to Jorge Arce in Tijuana, Mexico. Wow. I think it was at, a, it was at a, the Toro Stadium, right, where they fought the Bulls, right? right. And went in there and, and, and beat them. Yeah, beat them. That was uh, it's another great fight. And that was All right, guys, another commercial? That's what Wait, you uh, remember. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. Say it. Go ahead. No, I said, you're always going to remember your last fight. Always. You're always oh. going to remember your last fight. That's why all these guys that are my age or older that are coming back, they remember the last fight. And I bet you most of them lost that last fight. You know, and that, that brings up something else. Like in this commercial and, you know, and, and, and talk about your, your, your IG account and everything. But that brings up one thing, you know, that we've noticed that I've noticed and a lot of fans have noticed is that you still have all your wits about you. You're pretty level-headed. You're pretty clear. You know, you have people, you know, um, and God rest his soul, you know, people like Bobby Chacon, you know, you got Pete, you got boxers that they get to a certain age, you know, um, Bam Bam Rios, you know, you get, you get, they get to a certain part of their career and you can tell that, that, 
pugilistic dementia starting to set in, you know, that like they got hit too many times and they, they were in a lot of wars. And us as fans, we love that. We love the violence. We love boxing. We love to see it. But at the end of the day, it's a brutal sport, you know, and it's uh, it's good to see that you actually still have a lot of your, you know, you, your, your, sci- your sound, mind, body, and soul. Thank God, Thank God man. He blessed me with that. And um, that's, that's um, unbelievable, man. And I thank God for that. And just, hey, you know, I, the first time I ever went to the Hall of Fame and I, I seen all the boxers, that gave me a lot of inspiration. And to see the, the fighters that were like that, and you know, that had trouble with that, you know, being punch drunk and all that, it was very sad. So that helped me out a lot. Cause I went, I went, first time I ever went to the Hall of Fame was way back before I even, um, before I, I was barely coming up. So I'm meeting all these champions, man. And I'm all excited, you know, looking up to all these champions that are older than me. So, you know, it it gave me a lot of determination and it helped me out a lot. Okay, that's it. Okay, and one one more question and then I'm going to ask you another question the fans had, which is going to lead us off to the next segment of the show. Okay, but one question is, out of your four losses, which one would you want to do again? If you had a magic wand and say, you know what? I would do this different and I want to fight that person different and, and, and get them. Um, both the uh, Malala and Pastrana. <laughs> you would. <laughs> those, okay. those two fights. I would love to fight them again. But you know what? They beat me that night. It was their night. It was their night. Nice. Out of them. And may um, Malala rest in peace. And with the great victory he had a, 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 over me, I love that that he went like that and um i love that man um, hey you know that's the way it is brother that's exactly see guys i mean even if i, I told michael i'll give the magic wand like he said you know that was their night you know what i mean and, and and that goes from a great legend a great fighter a great warrior you know what i mean that all doesn't matter guys and like we said like we always say in the show the fans want to see great fights the old don't matter guys the old does not establish a career Michael Carvajal had a great career. I mean, he's doing great out, uh, out of the, you know, square circle. So, man, congratulations, Michael. This is the question that's going to follow us up to the next segment, which is what do you think about Canelo versus Billy Joe Saunders, which is coming this weekend? Your thoughts? They want to hear from the legend. They don't want to hear from us. <laughs> I say, I say um, if I say Canelo all the way, just by the style. I was watching um, Billy Joe Saunders, and I think he has a, a, a little bit of difficult, difficult style for right. Canelo. But I believe Canelo's so sharp because uh, Billy Joe, he likes to keep his hands down a lot. You know, he likes to move like that. You know, the only thing that's going to give Canelo problems, if he gives him problems, is just the stance of being left-handed. That's it. But I don't think it will last more than... Four to six rounds. Canelo. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't have to give the prediction, Michael. Oh, <laughs> now you gave the prediction already. All right, that's good. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, man. About no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get predictions. We're gonna get predictions. We're talking about fighting. That just, I, I don't that, know if you're right, but you know, I'm, I'm on Canelo side. Just the Canelo. style and Saunders style. If Saunders, he can, if that boy can um, take a shot, he'll be Canelo a harder time. If he could take the shot. If but, he could take a shot. Yeah, but we've seen what what Canelo has done to all the British fighters, man. So. That's gonna be a tough, a tough quest for Billy Joe Saunders. He better have that power. To, I mean, with with hell that power, you know. Yeah, he he better over. have all that. <laughs> have all of it, cause Canelo, all of it. Canelo's a bad dude, man. He's a bad, bad dude. Okay, uh, Michael or somebody, uh, do you guys have a the Ninth Street Gym's uh, page or something, or or where people can go follow? Them? On Facebook, Michael Carvajal. You, you yeah. said that. Uh, you, okay. You so just through Michael Carvajal. Okay. Yeah. So don't forget, guys, if you guys want to be part of the Ninth Street Gym, make sure you guys go to Michael Carvajal underscore official on Instagram, guys. Stay, uh, stay posted. Do they, you have openings right now, Michael, Michael for the gym? Michael Carvajal Ninth Street Gym. 
Oh, Lord Michael Carvajal, Ninth Street Gym too, guys. Don't forget Michael Carvajal, Ninth Street Gym. And uh, know when you're training there, you're training in a historical landmark, man. That's a historical landmark now. That that gym is, it's you know, it's it was just something special. Hey, I was a little kid when I was running and making trouble in that church. Woo! <laughs> I was running in yes. out of that church, <laughs> teasing them all, running in and out. <laughs> I want to get chased. <laughs> It's a trip, man. It's a trip. Uh, do you want to give out any uh, shout outs or anybody? You want to say hi to anybody, Michael, before we head to the next segment? Um, thank you for uh, supporting to all my fans out there, man. Thank you for supporting me and still being there. And I really appreciate it a lot. You guys uh, made me fight the way that I fight because I wanted to give you guys exciting fights. Thank you very much. All right, now Michael's going to help us. He's going to make predictions. And we're already going to make predictions in two fights, guys, actually, this time around. There's, even though it's a big card, uh, we're just going to give a shout-out to Mark. Uh, what's his name? Mark, um, the Olympian kid or the amateur? Mark stand -up? Castro. Mark Castro. We're going to give a shout-out to Mark Castro. He's uh, TB, TBH, right, to be announced as fighter. Well, that's always a, a hard opponent. Yeah. So Mark TBD? Castro. Yeah, TB, yeah. Big shout-out to Mark Castro. But here we go. Let's get going. Saturday from Arlington, Texas. Uh, help us out, uh, Michael. Uh, we're going to start with the co-main event, which is Elwin Soto versus Katsunari uh, Takayama for the for Soto's WBO belt. Who do we got on that one, guys? Let's make some money for people. Who wants to go first? Um, Not everybody go first, huh? <laughs> I'm going to go I'll with take Soto. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with Soto, Soto. too. I'm going to go with Soto. I'm going to go with Soto. So, UD or, or KO? Uh, late stoppage. Late stoppage. TKO. I'm I'm with Fern. They they stop it. TKO. Uh, Michael, let's go, with Michael. Michael, what do you got on that one? I'm going with you guys. They stop it. TKO. <laughs> I'm back to the lone wolf on this man. I got Takayama. Late round stoppage. I think he's going. Wow. Nice. Ah, all right. Oh, do the wolf, bro. Oh. <laughs> lone wolf, baby. lone wolf, baby. You're the lone wolf. All right, guys. So if you guys want to make some money, you guys should go with Fern, Michael Carbajal, or myself. We're going with Elwin Soto. TKO late in the fight, or you could go with the lone wolf, which is stacks. Uh, go with uh, Takayama, take TKO late, also. Okay, let's go to the main event, guys. That's uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus, versus Billy Joe Saunders for the WBC, WBA, WBO scraps at 168. Who do we got, man? Oh, we know what Michael has. Yeah, Michael, Michael, has. Has. Michael already said it, Michael, Michael said already. it already. Yeah. Michael Carvajal says it doesn't go past four to six rounds, guys. C Canelo by KO or TKO, Michael? KO. KO, guys. Ooh, KO yeah. between the sixth and the, the fourth and the sixth. All right, who's next, guys? There you go. Michael gave his. Go ahead, Fern. All right, I'm going to say that this actually goes to a 12-rounder. Goes to a decision. I say Canelo wins it. I feel... UD? I, you know, I, I... No, yeah, UD. I still haven't seen Canelo fight someone since Laura that can move. And we know Billy Joe Saunders can move. And Canelo's been fighting the guys that are just there, standing with him, going like pretty much almost toe-to-toe, -to -toe, very light, not moving fighters. This is a movement type fighter. Billy Joe Saunders can move. So I think he does trouble Canelo through some of the, through some of the fight. But I feel that his firepower is just going to be too much for uh, Billy Joe. He's going to catch him enough to win rounds and everything. He's just not going to catch him enough to be able to knock him out. So I'm going to say Canelo wins, UD, 12 rounds. Thanks. I say uh, Canelo, ninth round TKO. TKO. I think they stopped you might... the fight. I think they stopped Pick the fight. the right number, too. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, ninth street, Jim. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, man. Dude, that's a good one. Okay, here we go. Oh, somebody said Canelo also for ninth round. Okay, yeah. Jorge Pimentel. Your, Jorge Pimentel, is, is that your relative, Fern? That's my brother. <laughs> All right. So Jorge says ninth round, a ninth round, bro. Okay. I'm going to go with the eighth round, the famous eighth round, and I'm going to go by TKO. Uh, Canelo gets it, man. I say Canelo gets it. Uh, and we're going to set up that fight. I guess uh, Caleb Penn is not that hurt. Uh, his hand's pretty good now. So he's already planning to go in September with Canelo. So I yeah. think we get the Canelo Caleb Penn in September. I think Canelo's going to do a show, a good showing, and he's going to give us either a TKO in the eighth, um, a stop pitch in the ninth. Or he's going to get KO from the 4th to the 6th. Or maybe a decision with Burns. So there you go, guys. Everybody has Canelo winning on this one. There's no way that uh, we're breaking against him right now. 
Everybody's going with him. So there's no Billy Joe Saunders pick from the boxing rundown, guys. Yeah. Once again, guys, uh, don't forget, follow Michael Carvajal underscore official on Instagram. Michael Carvajal 9th Street. Right? Jim? Oh, Street, Michael Carvajal 9th Street Jim. Yeah. Michael Carvajal 9th Street Jim on Facebook or where? Facebook. Facebook. On Facebook, guys. So don't forget, Michael Carvajal 9th Street Jim on Facebook. Michael Carvajal underscore official on Instagram, guys. Thank you, Michael Carvajal, the legend, Michael Carvajal, for being here at the Boxing Rundown. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Take and, care. I'll, I'll keep in touch, man. Yeah. No, and yeah, we're going to see you soon, man. We're gonna be going to you, Michael, <laughs> next time. Love you, brother. And, All right. And I'm gonna get my and I'm gonna get my butt beat at the gym. There you go. I want to <laughs> I want to record that too. That's right. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your families. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right, Michael. Thank Please. you, man. All right, so we're we're so we're not gonna continue on that other thing. Oh. Okay. Well, what do you want to say about that, bro? I thought it were done. Well, no, I just basically wanted to continue to speaking and get more on your thoughts on the entire situation because I just uh, I just think he screwed up. I think he screwed up, bro, and he's gonna end up going to jail for life. Yeah, that's a bad situation, and it's in the four times now, and I think he's he's done, man. He's fried. Mm -hmm. All right. That's sad, man. That's sad. Yo, what do you think about that, Verdejo? I mean, what do you think about Michael about Verdejo? Man, that that he just messed everything up, you know. I I you know, I don't even really want to comment on it. And, and yeah, don't if you don't want to. Don't, yeah, don't if you don't want, don't, yeah. If you don't want to, you don't need to, and anything like that. Just, so, you know, that, earlier that, I made my opinion. Just known. sad, it's just yeah. sad. And, and, and I, think, I, I think we all agree with you, Fern. And I think, like I said, man, he's a fried man, man. That's it, man. Hopefully, you know. Yeah. The family so gets prayers, for, prayers for that girl's family. For the girl's family. Yeah. You know, at, least, at least they have the the body, you know, and not to sound like that, but at least they have some peace and closure now that she's not missing. You know, they, you know, it, it's got to be hard. So, you know, just my, my condolences, prayers to the family and, and to Verdejo's family as well, because, you know, it's another, it's, it, it's another family that's going to have to deal with another loss of a family member mm -hmm. once he's gone. Because I, I think a uh, friend was right. He goes to prison out there in Puerto Rico. That street justice is going to take over. Yeah. yeah. So, just a bad right. situation, and again, yeah. just solace to that family because it's yeah. just too much, too much. All right, guys. Uh, don't forget, we had Michael Carvajal, the legend, guys. Thank you guys very much. See you all next week for the Boxing Rundown. Oh. I'm your host, Boxing Ruckus. Right, Peace.